When you're scaling from a photograph, you're using a lot of high school geometry and trigonometry. And I realize some of you aren't yet in high school, so I'm going to go over this very quickly. I was given the dimensions that they want it to be. They want it to be 25 inches high, 25 inches wide, and 16 inches deep. So you have to bear in mind that a photograph is not a scale drawing. But also, when you're making something that's repeatable, like the legs, as long as you make all four of them the same way, uh, it, it should be fine. So the way I do it is I take the photograph and I use a scale ruler. Uh, you know, I got this one here and got an engineer's scale that uses centimeters. Centimeters are a lot easier because it uh, goes down to the tenths, tenths of a centimeter. So you measure this distance, which is 14 centimeters, and that translates into 25 inches of height. And from that, you can scale every section of it. Like I know that the top is going to be three quarters of an inch, uh, three quarters of an inch thick. This section here uh, is four centimeters long. So four centimeters divided by 14 centimeters total gives you the proportion of our 25 inch height. So it's four divided by 14 times 25. And that will give you seven and seven and one eighth inches from this corner to just under the top. And then you mark off every transition along the leg and scale it similarly. So from all this scaling, I got these dimensions and I was able to make a, a mock up a blank of the leg on poster board. Whenever you're going to the lathe with something, you're better off making either a plywood or a poster board uh, mock-up of it first because you got to repeat it over and over. I've done it with paper and paper is just too bendable and pliable. You got to have something with some rigidity to it. So uh, I, I began by measuring our thickness and then I measured our length and then I marked all the transitions and then for all the curves and things you make these little paper dolls. It's so much easier to do a mirror image just by folding the paper in half and then tracing it onto here. And you can do it in sections. It's way easier than gluing up a 25 inch long piece of paper like that. So you can do it in little sections. And by the time you're done, you have a, a, a nice model of your leg that you can cut out with scissors. And that's what we'll use uh, when we go to the lathe. So I'm going to lay out my pattern on these thick boards to uh, come up with my blanks. And they're not the cleanest, and I get the feeling that these uh, were taken from a tree that was either standing dead or had fallen over and been dead for a while before they milled it up. So I'm not sure what evil lurks beneath the surface here. Um, there is some visible punk on the outside. I'm going to have to see how it cleans up. And I'll start with four blanks, and if it doesn't work out, I can delve further into my batch here. When you're working with rough sawn lumber, you're always spending a lot of time on your joiner uh, to clean things up. So we want to work. We, don't, we want to square off the sides that are on the inside of the log. This is the light colored sapwood of the cherry. We don't need to eradicate it, but we want to minimize how much of that is in each blank. So these two faces are the ones I'm going to want to join. Uh, you start off with a pretty deep bite taken from your joiner, and then when you make your final pass, you, you just barely shave it off to make it nice and clean. This face cleaned up fairly well, except down here you can see we got some punk right there. So we're gonna we're gonna make passes until that goes away and kinda hope it does go away.
got a couple of worm holes, but if I put that on the skinnier part of the foot, I'm sure that'll come right out on the taper. So that's good enough for one face. So you get some rough boards, and not until you clean up the faces in the joiner do you really see what you got on the inside. There's one face, and then you turn it 90 degrees, and there's the other face, and that just tells me that... Uh, no way is this thing going to clean up for me on the inside because these two faces radiate towards the pith of the log. So that's basically, that had heart rot from the very beginning. We'll choose another piece. We got plenty of wood. Surprise, surprise. I planed this piece to discover that it's walnut, not cherry. So all of a sudden the stakes are higher that I can get a good piece out of the last chunk. So now that we have all the legs milled up, we have to align them so that uh, the, the good side is towards the, the top, the fatter part of it. Uh, that way all the sapwood and wormholes and things will uh, get shaved off on the lathe. Also we have to choose the two best and most attractive faces to go on the outside of the table. So we'll mark them because it's up here where we'll do the fluting. <laughs> 